Welcome to Story Chats at NSP Romance. I'm Elizabeth Madry and I'm here with my two co-hosts. I'm Narelle Atkins. I'm Valerie Comer. All right, so today it's just the three of us and we're going to be talking about weddings. So um, <laughs> weddings specifically in CCR novels. Um, so we're going to dive in and just get going. Where do you like to see a wedding in CCR? Or we could back up a little bit and say, do you enjoy seeing weddings in CCR? And um, we'll, go to, <laughs> we'll go to Valerie first. Valerie, tell us your wedding thoughts. I think there's two main angles that we could look at it from. And one is, uh, would be the question, should every CCR or should many CCRs end with the wedding of the couple of whose story it is? I'm seeing some head shaking. I'm, I'm seeing actually, yeah, quite a bit of panic there from Beth. No. Um, <laughs> the other question is, what about other people's weddings within the story? Because you've got people and in series you have previous people who uh, might be getting married further on down the road. So I think there's two different angles to the mm -hmm. question of weddings in romance novels. Okay. Narelle? Well, I have a third angle to add. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think the question of whether or not um, a CCR should end in a wedding is very interesting. Um, when I was writing for Heart Song Presents, it was pretty much expected that there'd be a wedding at the end of the book in the epilogue. So I got very used to, for the six books I wrote, for Heart Song for, to actually have a wedding at the end. Um, but another angle is the actual, the way weddings are a trope in terms of the actual romance storyline. Mm -hmm. So you can have a wedding of previous characters in the series. You can have a wedding at the end or not have a wedding at the end. But then there's also the fun around the whole idea of wedding tropes. So that's the third angle that I'd like to add. Expand on wedding tropes. Um, you've got the wedding planner, for example. I think Hallmark does this really well. There's a lot of Hallmark. You've got runaway brides. You've got marriage of convenience that often has a wedding. Like a lot of the tropes will connect into a wedding somewhere as well. Okay. So I think that sort of comes as far as I'm concerned under the wedding umbrella. Okay. All right. That's cool. I hadn't thought about expanding it into like, um, Marriage of Convenience or Runaway Bride, although Runaway Bride is a whole other thing for me because I don't understand why that's a trope. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we should do a series, a podcast on that sometime. Just wait, um, wait a few months because I'm going to have a Runaway Bride later on. Okay. But they're yeah. not like the the movie Runaway Bride with um, Julia Roberts and Richard Gere, and I'm just like, how, why? why would anyone want a woman like this i love oh, that movie i don't understand she i love that movie is what she needs <laughs> oh but it's a fabulous movie that's one of oh i do and again it's richard Gere, so you should it know that richard, yeah <laughs> But I love that movie. I just, um, and Four Weddings and a Funeral with Weddings in it, which is, again, not CCR, but right. um, yeah, the whole wedding thing, I just, I just love weddings. <laughs> so I, I am not really a fan of weddings in books, generally speaking. I, I don't, in like the of wedding of cases? the character, say it again. In all of those cases, all three of these angles? Um. I don't mind weddings of previous couples, provided that it's not like three chapters of wedding. Like, I don't need sure. to know, like, and then the bridesmaids walked slowly down the aisle after the flower girl spring. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't care. I don't like going to weddings in real life and sitting through it. I don't want to read about it either. If everyone would elope, or do like really short weddings, the world would be a happier place. Like getting up to watch the royal weddings that take like 87 hours, I'm just like, not for me. I don't need the pomp and the circumstance and no, I'll pass, hard pass. So- um, I'm there with bells on. <laughs> I'm looking for the TLDR like the next day, like give me the one paragraph summary. Who was there? 
Did they get married? Best photo from the whole thing. Check. I'm good. Was there any so, drama? Right. Right. So I don't, I don't mind. I do like seeing in moderation, the weddings of the previous couples, provided that it's germane to the plot and not just like, oh, well, they got engaged, so we need to throw this wedding in. That's and what it, I was going to say. It, it needs to not just be in there because it happened, but right. because it matters to the current couple for, yes. for some reason mm. or another. It has to advance the current plot, which can get tricky Yes, when you have a lot of weddings, because I've had some yeah. This when I talk about this, but I've had some that have had like three weddings in them because I'm in this community and all of a sudden everybody's like getting married in two months and it's the two months that this story is taking place. Yeah. So you're like, how do you, you know, I mean, I'm not asking the readers for their opinion on that, <laughs> but it is hard sometimes to go look at these weddings and go, how, what do today's couple, why do they care? Like, yeah. How does it matter to them so yeah because yeah you don't want it just in there as a token scene right yeah I, or i don't now apparently norelle would be there for it norelle's <laughs> like yes put it in yeah, 2 a.m for that <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, i don't, I don't um, know i suppose i recently went to a family wedding that was just beautiful i mean i just i don't know i just love weddings always have always will i don't know it's just me <laughs> i find the, the older i get and it, and it translates some to my books, but the older I get, the less patience I have for all the trappings, especially in the US, it feels like weddings have become like these 60, 70, 80, $100,000 affairs. And I'm like, why would you spend this kind of money on a one day thing? That a party, just a party. Yeah, it's, it, it's become more about a party than about a covenant with one another before God and your family, you know, and, and so that's where I start to get a little frustrated is because I feel like yeah. as a, a culture, we've stepped away from the purpose of the, the, the wedding, which is the marriage. Um, and so we get stuck. And so well, I'll clarify my <laughs> I'll clarify my thoughts. So the last family wedding that I went to recently was um, well, they were married in a church, mm -hmm. and um, the father of the groom um, is a church minister, so he did the service, mm -hmm. and then they had a reception in the garden, and it was pizza. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was really, it was simple. It was um, heartfelt. And so a wedding doesn't have to cost $100,000 to be amazing. And so I think when I say I love weddings, I lo I've, if my children decided that they wanted to elope, I would not have a problem with that because I can see why people want to avoid the hoopla. But I also think it's fun. So I think every bride should be able to have the, I would hope, the, the wedding they want, however big or however small or however simple that is. Yes. that it's the whole um the whole concept of two people committing their lives to one another and promising to love etc is the the core essence of a wedding it's not how big the cake is or how beautiful the dresses are or all those things yeah. how posh the venue is <laughs> indeed indeed <laughs> all right so um are we ready to talk books with weddings sure yeah all right valerie you want to go first now that we've kind of narrowed this down to three different angles, now I don't sure. know which one to start with. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to go with Tara Grace Erickson's Longing for Lily. Mm -hmm. And that would fit into Narelle's category number three, yep. in which um, she is uh, organizes events at her storybook farm. Yep. And most of which are weddings. And he is a wedding photographer. And they hate each other. So there you go. There's there's your fun trope for the day is is the enemies one. Um, but so there's lots of weddings, lots of weddings in this mm -hmm. book. And she had a fun time. I think uh, Tara did as the author, um, making the weddings different from each other. Mm -hmm. They were fun. Like they weren't all cookie cutter because Lily did the wedding. So this is Lily's brand. It was each each couple's. And I thought. That it was really sweet um and and of course they're being forced together because he's the photographer that everybody wants and hers is the venue that everybody wants so. i had that one on my list um and i liked it because the focus is not really on 
it's not long drawn out descriptions of the weddings, right? right? It's a snapshot here where Josh and Lily are having an interaction or scrambling around because, you know, the cake fell over or, you know, and so it's the wedding is part of the setting as opposed to necessarily being like the plot. And I do, I don't mind that. Like mm-hmm. I have a wedding planner book. I like, I like the idea of the wedding planner aspect of it. Um, yeah, it's a good one. It's fun. Narelle, what about you? Well, I'm, I'm going to go a bit further left field with some of my selections <laughs> today. The other trope that I really like is the bridesmaid and the best man trope as well. I didn't mention that before. That falls into category three. Um, but I'm going to talk about um, Snowy Summer by Patricia Werrikun, who's an Australian author. And this one is where... Um, Anna, Anna, I'm thinking, thinking the name's gone out of my head. She's Sri Lankan and was basically in a, in a family where she was put into an arranged marriage. Mm-hmm. And just before she's meant, on the week before she's meant to get married, she finds out some information about her future husband that means that she actually disappears out of Sri Lanka and runs away to Australia. So it's kind of a runaway bride before the wedding actually happens. And then it, there's, a, there's a bit of mystery and suspense and a few elements like that in the story, but it's more based around the romance. And it's basically, it's not a happily ever after in terms of going back to the fiancé. Like she needs to leave him and she needs to start over. So that's a fun story. It's in the set in Jindabyne down in the snowy mountains which is a beautiful part of Australia and I really enjoyed that and Patricia's also a sexologist so she has a different angle in terms of how she's writing CCR as well so if you're interested in more edgy um, possibly a bit more descriptive is the wrong word but maybe more analytical in terms of the relationship side then you'd be interested in reading Patricia and um snowy summer so it's a different take on the wedding because the wedding doesn't actually happen okay interesting cool all right so i um uh, keeping in the uh bridesmaid best man genre there uh her brother's best friend by hannah joe abbott is a bridesmaid best friend um bridesmaid best man Um, And it's kind of fun because the bridesmaid, the maid of honor, is best friends with the bride who in the previous book fell in love with the best friend's brother. So it's her brother and her best friend now getting married. Um, And so the groomsman, the best man, is the brother's best friend. So you've got, you know, that same brother's best friend trope going on at the same time as as bridesmaid groomsman. Um, And it's kind of fun. And again, the focus is less like the wedding is a big part of the plot because of all the duties of the attendants that they have to be part of. Um, But it's not like overwhelmingly pages and pages of wedding. It's the, it's the, it's the prequel aspect of it, you know, leading up to planning a joint, they get roped into planning a joint wedding shower and the guy is like, wait, why do I have to be here for this? So um, that sort of thing. It's, it's fun. And um, I actually really enjoyed that one a lot. All right, Valerie, you got another one? Sure. I'm going to toss it back at you, Elizabeth. Uh, (laughs) Hope for freedom. So we actually have two weddings in Hope for Freedom, right? Starts with the heroine sister's wedding, Mm -hmm. Sky, And then it's also um, a marriage of convenience story in which case there is a... Now now that you've said all this about your love for weddings, I'm beginning to see (laughs) why this couple would have just such a very simple, quiet little wedding Mm -hmm. but marriage of convenience it works for that so yeah um so there's yeah there's the the tail end of the 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 bigger wedding and then you've got the whole that which sets up the relationship and is it's not quite the meat meat cute but it's very nearly is um to Mm -hmm. the the couple whose story it is so yeah you managed to pack two weddings into that i did good for you (laughs) sometimes you can't avoid it no matter what you want to do Absolutely. they can't all get married between books <laughs> you've tried that have you i have i have a lot of marriages that take place between books 
I tend to have the stories happen overlapping timelines and stuff and then I can't get away with that <laughs> yeah One negatives of that it's it's a challenge for sure <laughs> Narelle what's another one for you well, I was interestingly about to talk about the Hope Ranch series and <laughs> you have so many books with multiple weddings, like seriously, oh, I know. <laughs> and not just Hope for Freedom, but also um, Hope for Family has a couple of weddings in it mm-hmm. as well. And I think I do agree that um, it's important if you're going to put a wedding in, it has to be there for a reason and all your weddings are very purposeful. So well done. <laughs> you tick that box. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, I really enjoyed the, um, how the weddings in this series, I suppose, because they're all living on a ranch and are all, they're sort of a pairing up in a way. So everyone's going to be going to all the weddings because they're all family and living in this close knit community. So I thought it was really fun the way you did the weddings in um, the Hope Ranch series. Yes, yeah, so that was on my list. <laughs> yeah, I um, I honestly didn't remember that there were so many weddings in that series. But now that you guys have said that, it's like, oh, yeah, I did get almost everybody's wedding is is on the page in that because they all, the timeline all is like right in the line. So there was no, there was no gap in the timeline for me to squeeze it in. It's a sad Absolutely. day. That's hilarious. <laughs> but they're all very simple weddings. They're, they're, I will say yeah. that they're. Kind of. They're no. not the $80,000 weddings, but they're not, uh, they're not all just the justice of the peace wedding either. No, no, that's true. And I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of a church wedding. I am. I, it's just more the simple, not, I, I mean, honestly, I think a church wedding is, is perfect if you can make that work with your yes. timeline and stuff. But um, because weddings are about your covenant with each other before God, you know, they're, right. you don't want to leave that out. Um, mm. But, and yeah, yeah, I think we're also, I know, I don't know what it's like where you are, but I live in the country that will lock down very, very quickly for, with no notice. So we currently in Victoria have a lockdown at the moment mm-hmm. for seven days. And so that means that weddings basically get cancelled. You can't get married for seven days. If you're in Victoria, you've got to change all your plans. Um, our, the family wedding I went to in Sydney, we didn't know whether that would happen because something something could go wrong and someone's in the wrong place at the wrong time so the limit was I think they had 100 people at the wedding limited to that because the way they were doing lockdowns you either had 100 or 20 so it was like well we'll keep it simple hopefully have 100 people but if we have to if it drops back to if there's a lockdown then we can just postpone and do it later because we haven't invested in this big hotel um extravaganza (laughs) it was very simple so maybe um in Australia maybe I think we really are moving to a world where weddings are not this big fancy deal anymore a lot of people are opting for a very simple wedding um because that's just what makes sense in the world we're living in so it'll be interesting to see if that trend of that minimalistic wedding trend continues or whether we go over over the top back into big fancy weddings when we finally pass this COVID thing yeah Really and, and definitely for the last year and a half, if there were weddings, they were probably at the Justice of the Peace or very, very small. For Not sure. what we had planned. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people lost a lot of deposits on a lot of different things. Um, or the companies gave them back and went bankrupt or. Yeah. 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 Or both. You or know, both. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. All right. So another one that I chose was keeping in mind that we'll go with an elopement, a courthouse elopement, um, Poppy's Proposal by Tara Grace Erickson in the same Bloom right. Sister series. Yeah. Um, that is a marriage of convenience. And um, they just go to the justice of the peace at the courthouse and have a, a fairly quick, but still, I mean, she described a lot of it and had, it was still a fairly nice little wedding scene for all that it was a somewhat spur of the moment (laughs) courthouse wedding um I you know so it's low key but I loved how focused on even still they had um they had a real focus on you know the point of marriage and and what it was even though it was a marriage of convenience too so I like that one do you have another one Valerie um Kind of. I mean, yes, sure. Um, Narelle's uh, The Bridesmaid's Hero 
mm-hmm. is, yeah. is a different angle again in that it's the um, here the heroine is at her or headed to her sister's wedding and her sister is very um wants everything exactly just so and they're running late and blah 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 blah. and it's the chauffeur that she falls for right the guy who's <laughs> yeah who's driving their car to get them there on time so I again it's been a while since I read that one but it was one that popped into my mind when I was thinking about um weddings is that there was a wedding in there it wasn't that of the couple yeah. it was a, a family member's wedding but that's where they met and yeah and took off. So yeah. that was a fun story to write <laughs> yeah. yeah I like that one a lot I like that one a lot that's a good one. I didn't, I don't know why it didn't hit my list. I didn't think of it. I, I'm i out. So do you have another one, Nero? <laughs> I do. And I've got a different one. So I've got um, a book that, and I haven't read this for a while. So I've got a bit sketchy. It's um, The Wedding Game by Amy Mateo. Now this is, I think this came out in like 2014, maybe. And it was the book, I think she won the Genesis or final in the Genesis contest, the ACFW contest for this particular book. And it's, I usually I don't like reality TV particularly, but I do often read books that have reality TV shows in it because usually it's a disaster, which makes Mm -hmm. sense to me. (laughs) So that works. And in this particular book, the hero is the son of the TV producer of this show and the, the couple win $2 million or something. And it's all set up that he's meant to pick a certain girl. And then our heroine is really hard up for money and she really needs to win and he impulsively picks her. And so it's very much the I hate you enemies to um, love a trope and they get stuck together being filmed for six months and it's just hilarious. So it's a really fun story and it really probably shows the, the truth behind what's really happening in reality TV if it's not actors that are pretending that they're real people, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Right. Yeah. 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 So that was a fun story. I had actually um, used about that one, but I, I, as you're describing it, I'm like, Oh, I remember that one. I, I think yeah. I enjoyed that one too, but my brain. That um, <laughs> the engagement plot by um, Krista Phillips. Yeah. Is, yes. Is similar in, For in nature. Reality they, yeah. Reality TV with the proposal that, was pretend and so they broke up afterwards and then he we comes should do an episode on reality tv ccr someday we should. yes we should there yes. are a lot of Five ones. more of them first <laughs> <laughs> yeah um let's see we still do you have more because we have a we have a couple more minutes we could well, I could just talk about my own books because almost all of them have weddings in them. You do have a um, oh, I do. Team Before Bride we, is a yeah. novella um, that yeah. the um, yeah. maid of honor and best man who just meet the night before the wedding, and he's this really happy-go-lucky, and we're gonna do this and rah rah for <laughs> Team Groom, and she's just like, would you just go away? <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> um, so that one was a ton of fun to write, and it's novella length. So if you're just looking for something quick and fun then uh, that one might might fit the bill but the wedding's in it <laughs> yes yeah. Narelle you got another no I think I'm done in terms okay. of wedding books I think yeah in terms of what actually stands out but um I do enjoy I like I like wedding disasters <laughs> I must admit if I'm going <laughs> to read about a wedding in a book I really like something pretty major to go wrong that has to be rescued I think that's one of the the fun elements of having a wedding in a in a CCR if it's not, not at the end of the book married, but <laughs> yes yes um Kimberly Ray Jordan actually now that I'm thinking her New Hope Fall series has several of the previous couples getting married now that we're hitting some of the the later on books um was it the most recent where the church burned down the night before? I think it's the most recent where the church burned down the night before the wedding. Oh, wow. Uh, so there's, there's a wedding disaster for you. Yes. <laughs> was it the night before? A couple nights before? It was really close to the wedding. It was like, ooh, that's not going to go well. Um, so, and I don't, I like the way that she weaves the weddings of the prior characters in because there's enough focus because you're invested in seeing them get married but it's not like 
oh, she turned into a bridezilla and there's chapters and chapters and chapters that are taking away from the current couple's story. That's yeah. what I don't like for sure. Yeah. Well, the bridezilla is very cliched, I think. <laughs> Maybe I just watch too much Hallmark. <laughs> That's often what you'll see yeah. in the movies. But um, I must admit, though, I, in terms of certain books, I will get frustrated if I see a wedding in the epilogue that just doesn't fit the story. And I don't know quite how to explain why it doesn't fit the story. If it feels too soon or too rushed or too perfect, I'm not quite, I can't quite pin down what it is. But occasionally I will be dissatisfied and think, why did this have to be included? It just doesn't, it's too much of a leap into the future or it just doesn't fit or I don't know. I can't quite explain it, but sometimes I think you're better off not to have a wedding with certain stories. Yeah. They definitely don't all need one. Yeah. I think it's fine to have one, but there's no prescription that must be followed. They need a happily ever after to fit into the romance category but that can be yeah. literally a kiss and a promise. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Cool. All right, final wedding thoughts. That was my final wedding yeah. thought. It, it's a good final wedding thought. Should we just leave yes. it there? Absolutely. Okay, we'll <laughs> leave it there with a kiss and a promise. I think that's a good place to end. <laughs> Thank you guys all for joining us uh, at Story Chats. You can find information on the podcast at inspiromance.com slash story chats. Um, if you're watching on YouTube or even if you're listening, you can find our Facebook page. You can go over to YouTube. Leave us a comment and tell us what you think about weddings in CCR. What your favorites are? Did we miss one that you feel like we really should have hit? Um, let us know that. And um while you're at YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. And we will see you next week. In the meantime, don't forget to fall in love with a good book. Bye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>